If you're a Moneys customer or you're thinking about joining them, this video will answer any question you have about how to use Moneys and help you decide if they are the right fit for you. So with that being said, let's get right into the Moneys banking app review and tutorial in 2021. You can open a Moneys account if you live in any of the 31 countries in the European Economic Area. To start, you simply download the Moneys app from your mobile device. I'll leave this linked in the description below if you want to join. This app will be like your branch, telephone banking and online banking all rolled into one. This is not only where you apply, but where you manage everything to do with your bank. Once you've downloaded the app, you can begin the account opening process. Start by selecting open a free account and it'll first ask for your email address, home address and an invite code if you have one. Once you've done that and you agree to the terms and conditions, it will then ask you to create a passcode. This passcode will be used to gain access to the app and later on you will be able to enable Touch ID or Face ID if your device has that enabled. It will then ask you to check your emails in order to verify your email address. This is usually sent within a minute or so. Once the email has been verified, it will then prompt you to open up the app again. The next step is to verify your mobile number. This is done by the standard way of sending you a text with a unique code that you'll then enter into the app just to verify that the mobile number you're using is in fact yours. It will then ask for your home address. The app actually has a really smart feature when it comes to this. You can use the map to select your location and the app will automatically fill in the address details. But if you're signing up and you're not actually at your home address or there's an issue with this, you can enter your home address manually. It then asks you to select the currency in which you want your account to be in before taking you to the ID verification. Now for the UK, it does actually only give two options for a passport or a residence permit. In my case, I select a passport and then ask to take a picture of the photo page. Now this can always be a bit tricky with the lighting and the glare. I would suggest turning the main light off and doing it next to a window to try and get better lighting and avoid the glare. As you can see, the app is very good at detecting errors as you're taking the picture and giving you instructions on what you can do to improve it. Once you've done this, it can take some time for it to be manually reviewed. At this point, you can close the app and come back to it later when it gives you a notification. And when you go back into the app, it then wants to make sure that it is in fact you that's opening the account and that you match the ID that you provided. They do this by asking you to record a selfie video. And again, as you can see, they give very clear instructions and it's a really quick process that's done in just a few seconds. Once this video has been recorded, it's then sent off again for manual review. So you may have to wait another few minutes. Once you've done this and you've got the notification, you can then start the very final stage of the account opening process. They ask you things like your employment status, how much money you plan to put into the account, and will you be using this as your main bank account? For this, I just selected the Money's Simple account and I'm not going to be using this as my main account. I personally didn't have any issues with the sign up process. I found the address finder to work really smooth and be a great feature in speeding up the process. The times waiting for the manual reviews can take a little bit of time, but it's only a couple of minutes and not too much longer than the competitors. But the fact that it does only accept passports and a resident permit for people within the UK could be a barrier for a lot of people. So it definitely gets marked down for that. So for the whole account opening process, I'd give it four out of five stars. Once the sign up has been complete and you've selected your plan, you're then prompted to use one of the main features of Moneys, which is the virtual cards. This means whether you want to order a physical card or not, straight away you can use the virtual card to begin spending on your account. You can do this by connecting your free virtual card to your Apple Pay, Google Pay, or whatever one that you have available for contactless payments anywhere that accepts MasterCard. Again, this process is really smooth and simple and the card was added to my Apple wallet within seconds. If you then decide you want it, you can go on to order a physical card. Now the cards on the Simple plan are technically free, but you do have to pay £4.95 for delivery. Now we understand there's a cost involved with producing a card and sending it out, but a lot of banks, including their competitors, do this all for free. And I've definitely sent letters through Royal Mail before, and it costs nowhere near £4.95 to send. The virtual cards, along with the integration for Apple and Google Pay, I really like, but the £4.95 delivery fee for a physical card, I'm not really happy with. So for the cards, I'd give them four stars out of five. And while we're on the topic of cards, if you want to check out one of the best wallets on the market that are fully customizable and that I recommend, I'll link them in the description below for you to check out. When you first open the app, you'll clearly see an option to add money to your account. When you click this, it shows all of the available ways to do this. Instant top up is where you choose an amount and then use a debit card from one of your other bank accounts in order to top up your Moneys account. This system works really well and I experience no issues when using it. Other options include bank transfer where it just gives you your account details that you can use or send to someone else in order for them to make a transfer into your Moneys account. 
Cash top up has two different options. You can use the post office, which will put the money into your account the next working day, or you can use a pay point outlet, which adds the money into your account instantly. Both of these options do charge a 3.5% fee with a minimum fee of three pounds. Request money is a feature that allows you to request a payment from friends, family, or other money users. This can be useful for splitting bills or paying someone back. Lastly, receive salary is just a way of them trying to get you to use monies as your main account. It provides you a letter to send to your employer with all of the details on how to transfer your salary into your new monies account. So there's three main issues that I have with monies when it comes to adding money. The first is that it doesn't seem to support Apple Pay or Google Pay. This is one of the easiest, fastest and most convenient ways to deposit money into your account. And it's one that many of the other banks, including their competitors, have implemented. The second issue I have is the 3.5% fee with a minimum fee of £3 for cash deposits. This cash deposit fee is very high, especially compared to their competitors. The third issue is that they don't accept checks at all. Now I know checks are less common nowadays, but people do still use them. So even if you did use monies for your main account, you'd still need another bank account somewhere else just for the purpose of depositing checks. With those three big issues taken into account, in terms of adding money to your account, I'd give monies two out of five stars. Now for the app, I'm gonna give you a full app walkthrough through all the features that monies has to offer. So if there's something specific that you're looking for, you can use the timestamps down below to skip ahead or go back for anything that's important for you. So logging in, when you first open the app, as you can see, I have Touch ID enabled. You can also set up Face ID if your phone allows that, or simply just use the passcode that you set up during the account opening process. First on the top left, you have what's like the main menu. From here, you can first view your store code and account number, and you can also gain access to the help section which has a big list of frequently asked questions. You can also view things like the details of the plan you're on, add promotional codes and get bank statements. This menu is also where you can change your account and privacy settings or even log out of the account. You'll also see on the bottom of this menu, the privacy mode feature. Now, the only thing I've noticed on this feature is that it hides the balance when you're on the main home screen. It doesn't hide any other sensitive information like your store code and account number. So I'm not too sure what the purpose of this will be. Back to the home screen and this icon towards the top right is for budgets. Here you can enter how much you'd ideally like to spend during the month or the week and then it keeps track of your spending and gives you a notification if you're approaching your budget limit. On the top right of the home screen you'll see the bell icon. This is notifications where you'll see any messages directly from monies. Now going further down the home screen to the main section you can see it shows the account that you're on and the total balance that's available. Underneath is where you can add money, which is what we talked about earlier, and there's also an option for details. This is where you can view your full account details, including your money's ID. It also gives you the options to share these details and also view and print statements. Continuing down the home screen, again, you have your sort code and account number. Recently paid is the next section of the home screen. This is where you can see a list of the people you've most recently sent money to. It gives you the option to quickly send more money to them if you need to. The transaction section, shows a list of the most recent transactions that you've done using your card and also shows the categories that they fall into. Next on the home screen is something that they seem to have directly copied from Monzo and not even bother to change the name and they're the savings pots. Here you can create a new pot if you want to set money aside for any specific reason. The pot will keep the money separate from the money in your main account. It allows you to set a savings goal and also gives you the option to enable roundups. This means when you spend any money on your card, the app will automatically round the amount up to the nearest pound and deposit that change into your savings pot automatically. At the bottom of the home screen is where you can check out the exchange rates. This is great for if you're making foreign transfers or spending money abroad. Now the navigation bar along the bottom. On the left, we have the home page. Next is cards. Here is where you order your physical cards and you can manage all of your cards. You'll be able to view the card details check or reset pin numbers and also lock the card if you somehow lose it and unlock it if you manage to find it. Next along the bottom is pay and this is where you send payments. You can use pay nearby friends but money seems to have quite a small customer base so the thing you probably use most commonly is new payment down at the bottom. This will then take you through to enter all the details manually of the person that you want to send money to and allow you to make that payment. The payment section is also where you can request payments and set up and manage standing orders. Invite is where you can refer monies to friends and if they sign up using your link or your invite code, you can both earn rewards if they order a fiscal card and begin spending. So if you do want to sign up to Monies, you can use my invite code that's on screen now to help support the channel and to also earn a bit of free money for yourself. Lastly is the explore section. 
or the make money is money section as I like to call it. Almost every bank has it so I can't really blame them for doing it but this page is where they're just trying to make money. The options are to upgrade to a pay plan, set up a savings account but once you click through to more details for the savings account you see that it's not actually with monies. It directs you through to set up an account with Razor and basically if you do so monies will get a referral fee. When you click through they try and entice you with this double bonus of £100 when you sign up but when you actually look at the details you actually have to deposit £75,000 in order to receive this £100 bonus. Back to the explore page there's also the options to add new accounts and also to manage direct debits. My overall view on the app, the design is clean and sleek, which I do actually like. However, the process to do things seems very clunky and you have to do most things manually, which other banks seem to have automated. Even the better features that they offer, like the budgets and the savings pots, are just worse versions of the ones offered by Monzo and the savings accounts are not even provided by them. Monies do provide a website for online banking which is a positive because many of their competitors don't but when you log in all you can really do is view the account details and statements so it's not going to be much use to a lot of people. Taking all of this into the account for the Monies app and online account I'd give them a 3 out of 5 stars. Monies offer three different types of personal accounts they have the simple account, which is the free version, and then the two paid plans, the Monies Classic, which is $5.95 per month, and Monies Premium, which is $14.95 per month. And you can get both of them slightly cheaper if you pay yearly instead of monthly. I'll have a video coming out in the next few weeks with more details about the Classic and Premium accounts. But for those of you that are interested, here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the different benefits and features that you get with each of the accounts. So you can pause the video here if you want to look at that in more detail. One of the most important things when it comes to choosing a financial service is the fees. The Money's Simple account is free to open with no monthly or annual fees. You do get a physical card for free, but as I mentioned before, you do have to pay the $4.95 delivery fee. Outgoing international payments are charged at a 2% fee with a minimum of £2 fee applied. And you can withdraw up to £200 from an ATM each month with anything over that being charged again at the 2% fee. Foreign currency card spending has up to £2,000 fee free but anything over that amount is charged at 2%. And also foreign currency transfers to other monies accounts are free but to accounts that are not monies is charged at the 2% rate with a £2 minimum. As you can see monies kind of love the 2% rate with a £2 minimum. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the monies fees. Do you think they're okay and acceptable or would they put you off from actually opening a monies account? For me, these fees and charges are considerably higher than a lot of the competitors and for that reason, I'll give them a 2 stars out of 5. Moniz has many of the security features you'd expect from an online bank. Face ID, Touch ID and passcodes are all used to access the account. It also has 3D Secure, which is where they send you a one-time password just to verify that it's you when making payments online, which is a great way to prevent against card fraud. You can also only access the account from one mobile device at any given time, as well as having the card lock and unlock features. They're all ways to make sure your money is secure. The issue I see with money is security is that they're authorised by the FCA as an e-money institution and not a bank. This means they're not covered by the Financial Services Compensation Scheme, which is a government-backed scheme to protect your money up to the value of £85,000 should the company go bust or anything happen to them. Although this is unlikely to happen, it still does happen. So putting large sums of money into somewhere that isn't protected is a bit risky and is something you should be thinking about. As they are an e-money institution, the FCA does however require that they safeguard our money. This means that any customer's money should be kept separate from the company's money and so that if anything goes wrong with the company, the customers should be able to get their money back. Whilst this does offer some reassurance, it's still not a government back guarantee. So we just have to trust that they're staying compliant and safeguarding the money properly. And with some of the issues that I'm going to touch on in a minute, that trust may just not be there. If you have any issues or need help with your money's account, you can contact the customer services directly through the app via the chat and they also have a telephone and email address available. If you email them, you do need to make sure that you email from the same email address that you registered with your account. Now, I tried to contact Moniz with a simple query just to see how they would respond. At first, I got a response from a bot that was asking questions that were completely unrelated, like what language I wanted to respond in. Once I said this wasn't helpful, it then said my message will be passed on to a representative, but it's now been two days and I've not heard a response and I can't keep waiting because I need to record this video. So it's a pretty bad experience on the customer services front. And this bad customer service experience seems to be reflected in a Trustpilot review score of just 3.6 stars and numerous low ratings relating especially to customer service. These negative customer service issues will no doubt largely come down to the big issues money started having 
towards the end of 2020. This is when reports started of hundreds, if not thousands of accounts being shut down with no warning, with many customers even complaining that they couldn't get access to their money after their account had been shut. Have money since done anything to solve this? Well, they said in a statement to iNews, the feedback we receive from our customers is important to us and we're always trying to improve in every part of our business. The protection of our customers' funds is one of the highest priorities and we have been introducing enhanced security measures to keep our customers' money safe. To me, that doesn't really explain why thousands of customers' accounts were randomly shut down and it doesn't give me confidence that something like this won't happen in the future. So with all that taken into account, for customer service, I'd give one and a half stars and for security, I'd give one and a half stars as well. So in total, my rating for Moniz is 18 out of 35 stars. So what do you think of Moniz? Let me know in the comments down below. And for more bank reviews, check out these videos here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.